in the northern Indian state of Uttarakhand, on the forested slopes of Nenital, is this magnificent edifice that evokes a castle from the days of yore, a regal building set amid sprawling gardens. It is an architectural icon and an elegant tribute in wood and stone to an ideal of excellence. This is Raj Bhavan Nenital, residence of the governor of Uttarakhand. A house that has become a national heritage. A structure built at the turn of the last century that has become a legacy for generations to come. The lake town of Nenital is a relatively young establishment. The area remained uninhabited till 1839. Once discovered by the British, a township was established and it grew rapidly in the years to come. Today it is an important tourist destination and the seat of the Uttarakhand High Court. In the 1800s, Nenital was the summer capital of the United Provinces of Agra and Avad. The old governor's house was situated on this, the Sherkadanda ridge overlooking the lake. In 1880, after two days of heavy rain, a disastrous landslide took place near the ridge and 151 people lost their lives. The old governor's house was deemed unsafe. The governor, Sir Anthony Patrick MacDonald, temporarily shifted his residence to Sherwood House on Ayarpata Hill. But that too soon proved inadequate. Finally, it was decided to construct a new residence on the grounds adjoining Sherwood House. The task of designing this new house fell on the renowned architect F. W. Stevens. Stevens was celebrated for designing the magnificent Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus in Mumbai. Perhaps it is no surprise then that the building he envisioned as the governor's residence in Nenital was an Indo-Gothic masterpiece. The foundation stone of the Raj Bhavan was laid on April 27, 1897. It took over 1,000 workers nearly three years to bring Stephen's grand vision to life. Finally, in 1900, the residence was ready. A stone plaque on the face of the building commemorates the principal players involved in the construction. The turrets provide a dramatic silhouette and make it instantly recognizable. The pointed arches are typical of the Indo-Gothic style that was popular amongst architects of the 19th century. The whole building is laid out in the shape of the alphabet E, with one frontal facade and three parallel wings. 
The grey stone primarily used in the building is a dark grey mal that was procured from the hills west of Nenital. White stone has been used in the arches and balustrades and provides an elegant foil to the darker stone of the walls. Red sandstone from Agra has also been used in some places. All external woodwork, such as the windows and doors, is executed in solid teak wood. The exterior of the Raj Bhavan, having borne the brunt of over a hundred years of sunshine, wind, rain and snow, was beginning to show its age. But a major restoration has been undertaken in recent years. Pointing and cleaning work was carried out on the walls. The roof sheeting has been replaced. And the facade has also been given a weather-resistant coating. The restoration has given a new lease of life to this heritage building. As one steps inside, the tough, resilient exterior gives way to a delightfully elegant interior. The reception room or vestibule has this beautiful recess built around the fireplace. Executed in a Renaissance style, it was originally made for the old governor's house and later installed here. These impressive elephant tusks were gifted to the Raj Bhavan by the forest department and are prominently displayed. The vestibule leads to a large central hall with a breathtaking domed ceiling. Behind the hall is a grand staircase leading to the first floor. Made of solid wood with large spheres at the ends of the banisters, the staircase conveys a sense of majesty. A gong mounted onto another set of large elephant tusks is displayed on the middle level landing. Beyond the staircase, is the ballroom. It is the largest room in the Raj Bhavan and can accommodate over 300 people. The arch ceiling is decorated with beautiful wooden molding. It has a solid teak floor and arched corridors on three sides. Balls and dances are a thing of the past. Impressive corridors connect the various rooms in the house. Their walls are adorned with portraits of the past occupants of the house. One can't help but feel the presence of history as one looks at the grand personages that have lived in this heritage building. Sir Spencer Harcourt Butler Sir William Malcolm Haley Sir Harry Graham Haig and the first occupant in independent India, Sarojini Naidu. This is Sir Homi Modi, governor from 1949 to 1952. He hosted many guests at Raj Bhavan, but perhaps the most notable gathering was Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, accompanied by Lord and Lady Mountbatten. The last Viceroy and the first Prime Minister of India probably dine together in this room 
in the east wing of the house. The dining hall is panelled in teakwood, with beautiful chandeliers adorning the ceiling. It is immaculately maintained, and new wallpaper has recently been installed. The dining hall has served many dignitaries down the ages, and doubtlessly will continue to do so for many years to come. Adjacent to the dining hall is the recently restored billiard room, beautifully panelled in hardwood. The drawing and waiting rooms are all very well appointed. In one room, a grand piano made in Berlin occupies pride of place. Signature pieces of furniture have been maintained and meticulously restored. This antique folding chair design that transforms into a library ladder has been perfectly replicated by expert carpenters involved in the restoration work. Old matchlock and flintlock guns adorn the walls Swords, spears and other edged weaponry is also prominently displayed throughout the house. Some of the weapons here are said to belong to the famous dacoit, Sultana Daku, often referred to as the Robin Hood of India. The brass fittings originally used around the house were imported from England. However, the recently installed fittings have been so expertly replicated by craftsmen from Muradabad that it is hard to tell them apart. The Rajpavan also liberally uses lincrusta in the ceilings. Lincrusta is a deeply embossed wallpaper made primarily of gelled linseed oil. It too has been painstakingly restored. This is the governor's office. There is also a large conservatory on the ground floor. With its glazed roof, it remains flooded with soft sunlight throughout the day and offers a serene and quiet retreat. The bedrooms and guest rooms of the house were until recently in a state of disrepair. Meticulous repair work has now restored them to their former glory. Specially procured wallpaper has been installed. Prime Ministers presidents and princes have all been hosted in these luxurious apartments. Large corridors provide access to the rooms and allow in a flood of natural light. All the rooms are spacious and well appointed, kept ready for guests and visiting dignitaries. Outside, an expansive lawn is spread out around the house. Flower beds with a multitude of flowers add colour to the garden. Beautiful trees of many different varieties have been planted around the house 
and their changing hues throughout the year greatly alter the appearance of the premises. Notable among them is this, the ginkgo biloba, also known as the maiden hair or fossil tree. Researchers have dated fossils of this tree to around 270 million years ago. The house and garden is set in 220 acres of land and a major portion of the grounds is covered in thick forest. Oak, deodar, rhododendron and horse chestnut are the principal trees that make up this charming wilderness. It is no surprise then that in 1950 it was here that Kulpati Dr. K. M. Munshi got the idea to start a Van Mahotsav, a nationwide tree plantation festival. This tree is in fact the first tree ever planted as part of the Van Mahotsav by Dr. K. M. Munshi himself. The woods around Rajpavan are home to many species of animals and birds. Leopards, though resident, are extremely shy and elusive, and one is very lucky to spot one. The kakar or barking deer is widespread and comes out to graze in the meadows in the late evenings and early morning. Gural or goat antelope prefer to stay on the cliffs or rocky areas to the south of the estate. A wide variety of birds flit about the bushes and branches. In the winter months, eagles that come all the way from the Central Asian highlands can be seen soaring high above the grounds. Truly, the Raj Bhavan estate is no less than a wildlife sanctuary. Nestled in the pristine forest, like a hidden gem, is an 18-hole golf course. Designed in 1926, the course is a short par 61, but the narrow fairways and changes in elevation make it a unique challenge for all golfers. The Raj Bhavan Golf Club, or RBGC, regularly hosts tournaments, particularly the Governor's Cup, which is keenly contested by amateur golfers from all over India. The Honorable Governor has also recently taken the initiative in securing the future of golf in Nenital and Uttarakhand by opening the course to local school children. Free golf tuition is provided to these students by the golf club and the first ever Governor's Inter-School Tournament was held in October 2015. It is amongst the most spectacular settings for the game anywhere in the world. Though once an exclusive domain, the Raj Bhavan is now open for tourist visits under the aegis of the Kumau Mandal Vikas Nikam. Amongst the forested slopes of Ayarpata Hill in Nenital, the Raj Bhavan stands as a proud monument to excellence. Gilded by the twilight sun, Glowing even in the darkest night. Shining brighter every day. With reassurance and poise, it has witnessed the birth of a great modern nation and the genesis of a progressive young state. An architectural marvel and a national heritage. Raj Bhavan Nenital, truly a legacy of excellence.